While the Danish Angevi Jonas Vingegaard is spending the autumn fine-tuning his parenting skills, his Slovenian arch-nemesis Tadej Pogacar is training like a beast in a bid to win his fourth consecutive Giro di Lombardia. He's been doing interval sessions in the hills near Lake Como with efforts of almost 500 watts to complete his preparation after having to abandon the Trevali Varesina due to bad weather. But what should have been a training session full of peace and joy ended with some bad news for Urska Zigat's boyfriend. Christian Prudhomme, the strongman of Omerie Sports and director of the Tour de France, made some explosive statements to the French media, La Dépêche du Midi. There he was asked about the exhibitions of the mystic Poggy in La Grande Boucle 2024 and a possible relationship with doping. Prudhomme insisted that when you consider cycling's recent doping-filled past, including records of dopers like Lance Armstrong or Marco Pantani, whose times were pulverized by the Slovenian from Sonia Duval, then he understood perfectly well why the question was being asked. Now, logically, he did not call Poggy doped, but he dared to doubt by saying directly that he doesn't know if he's doped or not. He said that there are doping controls and that every day they're trying to make them better and that the ITA is there to prosecute doping in cycling. Perhaps it's a gentle way of saying, I know he's doped up to his eyebrows, but I can't say for sure because <laughs> I could get sued for it. Now, at the same time, Proudhon wanted to compare him to other dopers of the past, such as Eddie Merckx or the guy who skipped doping controls, Bernard Hino. For the Tour de France director, it's unbelievable that riders like Poggy want to win all year long and in all competitions. Perhaps this is another subtle way of indicating that the Slovenian and his performances are astonishingly suspicious. But why should Proudhon doubt the star rider who's bringing back the big audiences to the Tour de France? Stay until the end of the video to find out. Oh, also, you can follow us on our personal Twitter, at Uncle Cycling, for more information. And while you're at it, subscribe to this humble channel if you haven't done so already. And now, let's travel back in time, specifically to 2006. After the decades where Jean-Marie Leblanc was hiding doping positives as director of the Tour de France, Christian Prudhomme was succeeding him to clean up the image of cycling after seven years of tyranny of a boring low-cost lance. It may seem laughable today, but in those years, Prudhomme was a manager interested in the fight against doping. After the revelations of the popular Operation Puerto in Spain, the new Tour de France director dared to expel the two cyclists favoured to win the yellow jersey, the Dopa Berillo and Jan Ulrich. Now, several Spanish teams also suffered the consequences, such as the Once team, which was forced to convert into Astana, and Fat Balbas abandoned cycling to earn money in Torre la Vega. Or well, there was the Kelme team, which ended up disappearing, and with Vicente Beldevicedo travelling to Colombia to continue linking his cyclists with Dr. Minar. One of the Spanish teams that also had many cyclists on the list of Dr. Eufemiano Fuentes was Sonia Duval. They were already being watched by the San Rigo investigation, in which the Italian authorities discovered Dr. Maria Sagasti had products which she had not declared in the Giro d'Italia. Prudhomme was initially on standby with Sonia Duval as the doping positives of Leonardo Piepoli and Iban Mayo in the 2007 Giro d'Italia were coming in. But Prudhomme, he had enough on his plate solving other doping cases in his own competitions, such as that of the Mennonite Landis in the 2006 Tour de France, or that of the Dane, because he's always a Dane, the Chicken Rasmussen in the 2007 Tour de France. But then... When Dracula Gianetti and Moonlight Machin decided they wanted to play gods in the 2008 Tour de France, everything blew up. Now everyone knows what happened in that hilarious and infamous Grande Boucle. The Cobra, Riccardo Rico, was flying and he won two stages while the fans thought he was the second coming of Marco Pantani. And the Bison Cobo was there with the old Piepoli destroying the CSC of friend of the channel, Bianca Rees, on his fetish climb of Otakam. Historic spectacles. 
explained simply by the masera that made classic Epo pale in the year 2008. And Proudhomme, he'd pursued these cases by allowing the French anti-doping agency and not the UCI of the nepotist Pat McQuaid to be in charge of the anti-doping controls in that tour de dopage. Proudhomme, he had it in for Sonier Duval and he made some very harsh statements against Dracula Gianetti when he withdrew his team from the competition, even though only Riccardo Rico was known to be positive. Tour de France director said that Dracula Gianetti was not exactly a paragon of virtue and that he wouldn't change his opinion of them in three months or five years. Again, this was a subtle way of indicating that Gianetti and Machin knew perfectly well that there was doping in the team, and as far as Proudhon was concerned, Rico's positive result didn't surprise him at all. 2008 was the year in which anti-doping controls worked best in the Tour de France. And that was the year which most damaged teams like Gianetti's Sonier Duval or Chris Froome's Barlow World. Since then, the positives gradually disappeared, with the return of low-cost Lance to cycling, and the arrival of Brian Cookson and Selfie Le Patillon as presidents of the UCI, an organisation that's always detested positive tests by cyclists in major competitions. However, Proudhon never forgot Gianetti and Machin, in the different versions of the Sonier Duval team, they'd spent 11 years in the shadows. At first, they were Fuji Servetto, and they weren't invited to the tour. In 2010, as Futon Servetto, they returned to achieve absolutely nothing. In 2011, the very dangerous Geox of Carlos Sastre, the doper Denis Menshoff and Juanjo Cobo failed to achieve an invitation to the Tour de France, the first year that they were playing for the invitation. After being coach of Chile in 2012, Machin returned to cycling with Gianetti at Lampre in 2013, bringing the old duo back together. Despite having riders like the doped world champion Rui Costa and the Vuelta winner at the tender age of 42, McDonald's Horner, and doped riders like Filippo Pozzato, Christian Durasek or Diego Ulissi, between 2013 and 2017, the team only got a win in the Tour de France by the hand of another suspicious cyclist, Ruben Plaza, who was implicated in Operation Puerto, an infamous, nay, notorious for receiving a bag of blood during his time at the Kelme team. But then, with the arrival of the big, big Arab money and the Slovenian alien Poggy maturing, it was time for the tables to be turned, and the Sonia Duval team gradually increased its number of annual victories, and achieving more and more success in the Tour de France after practically a decade in oblivion. After conquering the 2020 and 2021 tours, it was Proudhon himself who incited the rest of the riders to harass Tade Pogacar from the very first moment of the 2022 Tour de France. And coincidentally, that year, an exterminating Rabobank machine team with our beloved Danish Anchovy as a star, they pushed Poggy and left him out of the game. In 2024, the Slovenian, and Gianetti and Machin, have given it back to the Dutch with six stage victories, the last three consecutively. That must have hurt deep down in the soul for a guy who already in 2008 claimed that that team's directors were part of a systematic doping network. Because not only has he not been able to beat them, but today they have the support of Selfie Le Partion, with all his many interests in the United Arab Emirates, and the support of a loving public that admires the Slovenian alien as if he were a newly arrived deity. Therefore, Monsieur Proudhon, we give you a piece of advice. As president of Omari Sports, maybe stop trying to destroy our YouTube channel with strikes. And you could even support those of us who, on some issues at least, are on your side. You'll do better that way, my friend. And now for you, dear viewers, while you're here, stop by that video on the screen. You'll love it!